here today we're going to take a quick look at my retro crt asset pack game over there's a lot of different modular assets in here for you to blend stack and mask and create your own completely original graphics and today i'm going to show you how i made this retro loading screen sequence all right so let's get started when you download the pack, you're going to get six different categories. You're going to get backgrounds, frames, elements, tunnels, font, and in the font folder, there's actually going to be two folders, font small and font large. And I broke it up in two different sizes. So you have an option on how much CRT texture you'd want in your font. Um, so for instance, here, uh, this is font small. And then if we go back and we grab font large, you can see the difference between the two. And so if you had font large here and you wanted to make it smaller, you would scale it down, right? But in doing that, you lose some of that texture. Now, if I move it closer to the font, to the smaller font, you'll see how much texture you actually lose. And so that's why I gave you two different sizes. So if you decide to have a smaller font on screen, you didn't have to resize it and lose some of that CRT texture. This way you can kind of keep the same amount of texture within your font, depending if you're going to have a larger font or a smaller font. And within each of those font sizes, you're going to have uppercase, symbols, numbers, and lowercase. And then the last collection is going to be texture. Okay, so let's get started making this retro loading screen. Um, first, you're going to go and we're going to grab the sphere from the elements collection. And we're going to drag that onto video layer three. So this is how all the assets look. They're all white. And if you zoom in here, you'll see there's a little bit of color fringing. And the reason I did that, so it, I'd be able to give you the choice whether or not you wanted to keep that color fringing or if you wanted to get rid of it. Um, because this is something that is a little more difficult to add in post. And so I decided to practically film it that way. And so if you want to make it more intense, you can increase the saturation. So if we increase the saturation, you'll see how much more intense it gets. or you can completely desaturate it if you prefer just to be white. That or what I like to do, you can throw a tint effect on it and you can change it to any color you'd like. Uh, the downside to this is that if you use the tint effect, obviously you're not gonna get any of that cool color fringing and it's just going to be whatever color you pick. So there's one more technique you can use to replace the color here and that is with a track mat key. So in this instance I used a clip from my pack reverie. I used bold 2 and so if I drop that right underneath this asset and I use the track matte key and I drag that trap matte key on to that light effect and then I select the layer I want to be the matte and so in this case I want that sphere to be the matte so that would be video layer three and 
I change it to a Luma mat. And there you go. And so now the sphere has been replaced with that light effect from Reverie. And we want to make sure to turn on all the blending modes to screen. So as we start stacking these clips, we don't have any interference between them. All right, so next we're going to go to the Elements folder. And we're going to look for the small crosshair grid right here. We're going to drag that right onto layer five. And then I'm going to use that same technique for this. First, I'm going to use the blending mode. I'm going to set it to screen. And then I'm going to go back to my Reverie pack. And I'm going to go into the Fast collection. And I'm going to grab Fast 1. And it's got this kind of quick wipe here. And I'm going to go and drag that right underneath. Okay, I'm going to grab that track mat key. I'm going to select those small crosshairs as the mat. Set it to Luma. Make sure the blending mode's on screen. Okay. Now you're going to see that those little crosshairs are now being revealed by the light effect. All right, and that looks pretty cool. And so, I mean, that's a technique that I use a lot. And it just adds kind of another layer to these effects. All right, so next we're gonna go back to my Game Over Pack, and we're going to go again to the Elements folder. And we're gonna go into a folder that's called Small within the Elements folder. And we're gonna go grab random numbers and feet plus frames. Let's put this one. I'm gonna set those both to screen. And I'm gonna move them into position. So I kinda of want them to flicker on screen. So again, we can use that track mat key. I'm gonna to go to texture and I'm going to grab CRT Scan Glitch 2. All right, I'm going to throw that right underneath there. And then I'm also going to grab CRT Scan Glitch 4. Put that right there. And extend those a little bit. And then we're going to, we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw track mat key, both of those. It's kind of the same process. Change it to Luma, right? Make sure your blending modes are on the screen. And now you'll see how these numbers are kind of glitching on the screen instead of just appearing. And so what that's doing, it's, a, it's using the Lumosity from this effect onto these assets. I'm going to go ahead and put those on the end as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy those. Okay, so next we're going to do the loading bar below. And now this pack doesn't have a loading bar. And so the way you're gonna get around that is that you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go into the frames folder. We're gonna go and we're gonna grab the, this 2.39 guide. And we're gonna drag that right on top. And we're gonna select screen. And we're gonna mask this. So let's go ahead and get our pen tool. Let's draw a mask around this part of the frame. 
feather it a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna animate this mask so it looks like a bar is loading from left to right. So we'll go to the mask path, we'll click the stopwatch, create a keyframe there, move forward a little bit, create another keyframe, and finally one at the end. Okay, let's go to this middle keyframe here. Let's go ahead and drag these two points. I don't know, about, let's say about a quarter of the way, a third of the way. And then let's grab the first key frame all the way to the beginning, close to it anyway. Okay, so now if we play that, Kind of has this loading effect, you know, and that was pretty easy to make. And so you can do this with a lot of these assets. You can do masks on them and you can create completely new assets that way. And you can even save them out, you can render them. Um, you can save them in the project file. But it's a little thin for a loading bar for my liking. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm actually, I'm gonna take the second keyframe and I'm gonna pull it closer to the end. So it kind of slowly gets to that point and then really speeds up at the end. Let's take a look. All right, that looks better. Okay, let's go. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna duplicate this a couple times, let's say three times. And then we're just gonna move it up a bit so we're just increasing the thickness of the loading bar. Move this middle one down. Might be a little too thick. All right, let's move this one to the bottom. So we're just doing this to increase the thickness of the loading bar. Okay, so next we're gonna put in our text. We're gonna go down to the font folder and we're gonna go into font small to lowercase and we're going to start spelling out loading. So first we grab an L and we grab an O. This is kind of a tedious process. A D I N Okay, and let's go ahead and set the blend mode to screen. Copy that, and let's paste that opacity on top of them. All right, now I'll start spacing them out. So first I'll start with the L, and move the L over. So you're not gonna have to adjust the vertical since they all scan perfectly vertically, so they're all gonna be on a straight line. You're just gonna have to change the horizontal of them to get proper spacing between the letters. All right, we'll just fine tune this a bit, move that G over. Okay, loading. Um, and now we wanna do a couple periods after it. So we just wanna kinda of have like these repeating periods. So let's go back, let's go into the symbols folder. And yeah, let's look for the period. And I'm gonna drag it right up here. And then I'm going to duplicate it twice, so three. And then I'm gonna change the opacity by pasting my attributes to screen. I'll move all these periods over. There. Now I want to animate these on screen. So I'm going to go ahead and skip forward five frames, one, two, three, four, five, and pull that second period back. Another five frames, one, two, three, four, five, and then pull that one back. And 
then another five frames. And I'm going to delete. And now we have this animation. And then I'm just gonna copy this. And I'm gonna move from this point another five frames forward. And I'm gonna paste it. And another five frames. Paste and so on. And so I have this repeating animation. Alright. So I'm gonna watch that back. It looks pretty cool. But it's a little too big. So we're gonna select all of this font and we are gonna nest it. We're gonna call that loading. All right. And go to blend mode, set it to screen. And let's see, let's put it to 50% on the scale. And move it over a little bit, center it up. All right, that looks pretty good. But I think for this, I, um, I'm gonna do the same as I did for these random numbers down here. Um, we're gonna have this glitch on screen, have a little flicker to it. So we're gonna go to the texture folder and we're gonna grab the CRT scan glitch two. I'm gonna drag that right underneath that text layer. I'm going to drag and drop the track mat key onto it. And again, select the text layer, which is in my case, video layer 14. Set it to Luma. Make sure your blending mode is set to screen. And you kind of get this flicker effect. Expand it a little bit. It's a little slow, so maybe let's add another glitch after that. Let's try scan glitch three. Let's go ahead and go in and out point here first. Let's drag that right after that one. And let's go ahead and copy that track mat key from the previous one. Paste it onto there. Make sure that blending mode is set to screen. There we go. Let's do the same. Let's paste one of those at the end as well. All right, so next we're gonna put some of this analog snow from the texture folder right on top. So drag it right on there, go to blending mode, hit screen. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. Um, we're gonna select all of these layers. We're just gonna move them forward, I don't know, about a second or so. We're gonna go to the tunnels folder and we're gonna grab the circle hyper tunnel. Go ahead and we're going to drag that right on top. And again, blend mode screen. And I'm going to kind of, I want to line up that circle for when the sphere comes on the screen. So go ahead and put a marker on this clip. Let's hit M. so I know right where that lines up. Let's move this over to that. Okay, it's going a little slow. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this clip. And I think I want to add some color to this effect here. So. Again, I'm gonna go back to my Reverie pack. And if you don't have Reverie, you can always use a tint effect and do it that way, or you can leave it as is, or like I said, you can change the saturation. 
but I, I just think the using my reverie effect here, uh, it just adds another level since you're gonna have these colors that are moving within this rather than just being stationary. So we're gonna go over to my reverie pack and I'm gonna go into the bold folder again and I'm gonna grab bold 15. to be a good spot okay let's drag that in there let's go ahead and put it right underneath actually I'm gonna move this analog snow up here make a little room let's extend that bold 15 to match that clip again we're gonna go ahead and drag the trap mat key right onto that effect and then instead of the layer 16, map Luma and blending mode screen. It just blends better into this whole, you know, sequence that we've built here. And, you know, we can even go back. If we're looking at this, this sphere and be like, ah, I actually don't like how it's, you know, red right at the beginning here. Maybe we can go back and we find, we go back to that uh, bold two underneath sphere here. So we're going to go ahead and use our slip tool and we can kind of change the in and out point. And so it transitions, you know, to blue sooner. And if you're not liking this, this effect, you can always come in here and you can grab a completely different effect, grab it, hold your option key and it'll do a replace while keeping all of the parameters you've already used. And so now you've just replaced it. Now you can see what all these, so you can go through all these different effects. Hold the option key, drag it right onto there. I mean, there's just a lot of options here just to go through and just try different things and just experiment. A lot of this is really about just experimenting. I mean, what I've shown you here doesn't mean this is not necessarily, you know, the only way to do something. It's just fun to get in here and start stacking and layering all these effects and trying different blending modes and you know trying these track mat keys or using the tint effect or you know just just getting in here and experimenting and having fun that's mostly what all this is about so again thanks for watching i uh, hope you enjoyed it um, if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me i'll see you guys later toodles